Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, this morning I just ask that you would guide me and direct me in a manner that's pleasing to you as we share your word, Father. And I just pray that you would open our eyes, that we might see you, and open our ears that we could hear you. But most of all, I pray that we open our hearts to receive you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. When Joe asked me to fill in, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope I don't lose my voice here. He said it might be nice to do something about Christmas. So no pressure there. Um, and I got to thinking about Christmas and what I wanted to share about Christmas. And you know, whether it be the Christmas story, the, the nativity, or what have you. And, and the more I thought about it, the more I seen. Yesterday we were in that land north of I-80 shopping and didn't see too many smiles. And uh, the more I seen and the more I heard, I felt I needed to share the gift with you this morning, and that's the gift of Jesus and the Word of God. And, I, and it all starts with God. And, I, and, I'm gonna st and I'm gonna read a lot of the Bible verses today and as we should. So many times we try to relate to the things that happen in our lives when, when the answer is right before us in the Bible. And it is the Word of God. And Genesis 1 starts off just that verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's a pretty simple verse. But then related to that, if you, if you go to Psalms, I'm going to read to you from Psalms 33, verses 6 through 9, which... The psalmist, I think, hits the nail on the head. And, and that scripture is very, very clear to me at least. God is the maker of heaven and earth, it reads. He is the sovereign creator of all things. Scripture tells us that God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living thing. I've already messed up here. I didn't read you the song. Yeah. Steve, you're right. I'm nervous. <laughs> so let me read that song. By the word of the Lord, their heavens were made. Their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into the storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke it and it came to be. He commanded it, and it stood firm. So scripture does tell us that God formed the man from the dust of the ground, and he did breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And then man became a living thing, a living being. But it didn't end there. Man was lonely. Man needed someone to help. So then God made a woman from the rib of the man. And we all know that, that that's where we as men started leading us down the wrong path, right? <laughs> Just kidding. But, um, so that's where sin came in. And I want to read because it, through all this, I, I, I want, really, I, I thought about the gift, and I, and I want my boys to understand, and I'm going to share this with them, that Christmas is so much more than going to the store and giving a gift. The gift that I can share with my boys is the gift of God. And, and I hope we all focus on that more, and, and, and the need of the gift. And Romans 5, 12 tells us that, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people, because all have sinned. When Adam fell into sin, the result of that was that everyone, every one of us, even today, all of his descendants are infected with sin. And we continue we all continue to pass our sin on to our descendants, our children, just as Adam did. 
We're all guilty of that. Now that doesn't seem real peppy peppy for Christmas, I know. But we need to all realize and remember, especially at this time of year, that being born a sinner results in the fact that we sin. And our sin, what's really truly bad about it is that it keeps us from being near to God. God the Father, the one who created us. And, and I think back of the times in my life when I've not been near to my daughter and how I've let sin get between us, the evil one. And that's, that's no joke. But God loved us so much that he sent the only one here that could show us the way back to him. And I'm going to read to you from Matthew, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you till the end of the ages. And surely he is going to be with us till the end of the ages. And that is part of God's perfect plan. You know, when we read back in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the prophecies of, of the Messiah coming, that was all part of our plan. And part of God's plan, and we're part of His plan. But His plan to bring us home is, is perfect. And we've all heard of the Godhead, three in one the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father decrees the work, and the Son carries it out. And the Spirit, if we open our hearts, enables us. It enables God's work to be done. God sends Jesus with that almighty task to bear the sin of the world. That we, that he hopes that we would faithfully believe in his son Jesus. As our Lord, as our Savior. And if we do so, Part of God's plan is that we open our heart and, and the Holy Spirit lives within us to, to comfort us along the way, to guide us, to keep us on track. And that's one thing I, I want us all to know, that God knows how hard it is for each and every one of us to stay on track. I think sometimes we need to hear that, that God loves us. Without the sacrifice of, of Christ on that cross, all of the judgment of the world comes upon us. And I know, at least I don't ever really think about that in those terms. But just imagine your own judgment. I imagine my judgment. And wow. Um, but imagine Christ, as painful as it was to be nailed upon that cross, how painful was it to bear the sin of the world? How much love does it take to give him the strength to bear the sin of the world? I'd like to read to you as well from Matthew 25, 31 to 33. And I know I'm reading a lot of verses here, but I think the word is far more important than my word. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, sit on his glorious throne. All nations, all nations will be gathered before him. He will separate the people one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And I can tell you that reading that scripture over and over I've asked myself, am I going to be with the sheep or am I going to be with the goats? Because of this sin that we all have, God will call the world to account. No man, as scripture says, or no nation 
will escape his judgment. I don't know how that makes you feel. It makes me question the things I say and do, for sure. When I think about judgment, I think about, I don't really like to be judged. Do you guys? How many of us like to be judged? It seems like we're always judged, though, doesn't it? Every day of our lives, we worry about what people think about us, what people may say about us. And then here we are, judging others. It makes us feel pretty powerful to judge other people, doesn't it? Get one up on them. Be better than them. But then I, I think, who am I to judge? Who are you to judge? You ever hear that? You ever think that when, it's, when judgment's coming your way? Who are they to judge me? Well, maybe we should think about who are we to judge them. And really, who are we to judge ourselves? The Bible tells me that God will judge me. So when God calls us to account for the life we've lived, the question that remains for each and every one of us here today is, will he welcome us home? Will he put his arms around us? and have a tear of joy shed as he loves us and comforts us? Or will he shed a tear wishing that we would have loved him? Wishing that we would have known him? I'd like to read to you one of the most popular um, <clears throat> scriptures in the Bible, John 3.16. But I want to also, I want you to listen to verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's powerful, his love. But verse 17, and I think this is a verse we all forget. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's where God's grace comes in, is Jesus. And I, I know I judge myself harshly at times when I've done the wrong thing, and, I, and, I, and I'm sinful for judging others in that way. But I think that's an area where a lot of people steer away from Christ, is they feel like they're not making the mark, that, that Christ didn't come to save them. And that's as big a part of the message as that God give His only Son. He give Him to save us. And we have to remember that. And we have to spread that word. That's the gift of Christmas. That's the gift of life. Grace is undeserved. It's an undeserved gift. It's an undeserved favor. And it's undeserved love from God. A lot of times we don't know how to react, do we, when, we, when someone just does a random act of kindness that we didn't deserve. And is it the first thing that we think is, you will? what do they want? What am I going to have to do because of this? See, I think God's pretty simple. And I don't mean to call God simple. But his love is pure. His love is unending. And we need to remember that. We need to help people up <coughs> and put our arms around them and tell them we love them. Tell them it's going to be okay. Yeah, you messed up. The, the great thing is you got another chance. I always say it, anybody can do things when they're going smoothly. It's how you react when you have problems that count. And isn't that what all of us really want out of life? We want someone just to give us a leg up, put their arm around us, tell us it's going to be okay. Well, that's what God did to Jesus. But let, let us not forget that this gift, although we're undeserving of it, and, and it seems like it comes for free, God's grace wasn't free. 
It was paid at a great price. God's grace was purchased by the blood of his only begotten son, by his lamb. The, the Bible tells me his spotless lamb, as a matter of fact. And, and it was purchased at that cross at Calvary. And again, at the weight of all of our sin, it was purchased. And it's only through Jesus that the gift can be purchased or be offered, is what Scripture says. And teacher, or Jesus is so much more than just a son. He's a teacher of righteousness. He's a teacher of love. And that's what we should remember about Christmas, is who is this Jesus? He is our Savior, but he's our teacher. And he loves us. And what does he teach us? He teaches us righteousness. Jesus was referred to as teacher by his disciples. In fact, they asked him to teach them how to pray. And Jesus, if you think about his life, his short life on earth, and all the patience he had through the parables in the Bible and the stories and the patience he had with the disciples. I just, I think about that and I wish I had just a, this much of his patience. And, and for that fact, God's patience. God is just waiting on us to love him. And, and I just think about when I'm teaching the boys things like to zip their coat and, and Brady saying, no, I gotta go, I gotta go, I don't have time, I'll do it myself. Or I'm trying to teach Kate how to put a nut on. Righty tidy, lefty loosey, we all have heard that. And, and how sometimes I'm not as patient with them as I should be. How sometimes I'm not as patient with myself as I should be where when I feel lost and I feel like I just don't get it. I, I feel that way a lot of the times, and I don't know about you guys, but when I pray about it, a sense of comfort comes over me that it's okay, that the key is that I'm praying about it, and, and, I, and I hope that we all do. I'd like to read another Bible verse for you from John 14, 6 and 7. And I know this isn't how Joe preaches. I'm not a preacher. It's, uh, Stephen Rita pointed out, I'm not ordained in anything. So, appreciate that clarity. Um, but anyway, John 14, 6, 7. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. What a great teaching. He is the way and the truth and the life. He's the answer, is what he's saying. But how often do we remember that? Doesn't our human nature, our pride, tell us we can do it on our own? Don't we try to do it on our own? And if all else fails, then we'll ask God for help. How much better could things go if we just asked him for help before we started on that journey? Many times our attitude is, this is my life. I'm going to do with it what I want. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is God's life. He gave it to us. And God says to us, I gave you life because I love you. And he wanted us to be pleasing to him. But he also, along with life, he gives us this great thing that, at least in my life, has nipped me in the butt time after time. And it's called free will. That free will of mine gets in the way of God's work more times than I'd like to share. But he gives us that free will to choose love. Because he wanted us to have the will to come to him and love him back freely. He didn't just create us to exist. You know, he, he, he did. He, he gave us eyes to see his works, his beauty, what he created. And he gave us ears to hear his beauty and what he created and to hear him. And he gave us our heart to 
to open up to Him so that through the Holy Spirit, He can dwell within us and love us every day of our life. And in this world we live in today, I don't hear a lot of people speaking about love, let alone Jesus. And, and I can tell you, the last few years at work, I've got a couple friends and we, we talk about Christ most often when we talk about loving each other and, and helping each other out. And, and I've never had that in my life with, with, with other men. I, I've got to tell you, I have. And, and it's been a true blessing. It's been a true blessing. So we got to choose, you know, do we want to trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, have faith in Him, and find rest in Him? If not, we'll just choose our pride, right? And we'll try to go it alone, see how that works out. The problem with going it alone is just what it says is we're going alone. We're separate from God. And when we're separate from God, nothing can go right in our lives for a moment. We may have good intentions about working hard. You know, I don't go to church. I don't pray. But I do the right thing. I don't break the laws. How many of us have ever said that? I have. I have a lot in my life. Thinking that I could get to heaven on my own by doing good deeds. I can tell you, it, it don't work. Amen. It don't work. I need Christ in my life. And, and I'm telling you, you need Christ in your life. We can't get to the Father unless we come through His Son. That's what Scripture says. It said that for how many thousands of years? And we just don't get it. Well, we need to get it because we don't know how long we have to get it. And I probably shouldn't mention names, but I can tell you not too long ago, a friend of mine sat in a pew right over there behind my daughter. And I know that he was a faithful man. And, and, and he and I, we had our disagreements at times on things. But I can tell you, he loved me and I loved him. And I want you to ask yourselves, what if we got called today? Are we just going to be remembered as the guy that sat over in that pew in that spot? Are we going to be remembered of the gift that we shared with some? I remember Garrett saying one Sunday after Bob had left us that I'm going to sit in Bob's pew. And I, and I always remember Bob took time to talk to Garrett. And Bob was a positive influence on here. We all have that opportunity, don't we? All these kids here in this church that we come in contact, contact with, and even grown-ups that we come in contact with every day, we have the opportunity to share the gift. How tragic would it be if we did not respond to the teaching of Jesus? Be tragic to have to answer before have the answer right before us and miss the gift of his redeeming grace. We come here on Sundays, are we missing the gift of his redeeming grace? Only you can answer that question for yourselves. Only I can answer that question for myself. God knows the answer though. And when we talk of Jesus and we celebrate him. He's so much more than a baby that was born in a manger. He's so much more than a philosopher or even a teacher. As great a teacher he was, he's so much more. Jesus is the revealer to us of God's wisdom. He's that conduit to God for us. And he's our savior. He wants to rescue you. He's that knight in shining armor. He is Superman with the S on his chest. He can save us from this sinful world and only him. He's our redeemer. I'd like to read from 1 Peter 1, 18, 19. 
For you that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The precious blood of Christ. What a wonderful gift from God. The blood of Jesus, the scripture says, is more valuable than gold or silver. It has more power than anything of this world. More power than anything we can create, nuclear or otherwise. His blood has the power to save the worst sinner. It has the power to save you and me in life. Our sin is just as bad as the worst sinner. Our sin is just in, as in need of being saved. And then there comes faith. And that's what it's really all about is faith, isn't it? I can, I can read all these verses I want to until it's dark or until tomorrow. I don't know if you guys stay here, but if you don't have faith in the Word, then aren't they just words? Who do we put our faith in? Do we put our faith in those who promise Things like to lower our taxes. Don't we all, to a degree, put faith in that? Put faith in those who promise us jobs, promise us a vibrant economy, and, and promise us prosperity, promise to take care of us, promise that we'll never have to wait in line at a hospital. As Americans, that's who we put our faith in. But there's another choice there. That choice is to put your faith in Christ. To put your faith in someone who made an ultimate sacrifice for each and every one of us, who bore our sin until he died on that cross. And, but then he defeated sin when he rose again. That we might have eternal salvation. Now I think if I'm going to put my faith in someone I think I'm going to put it in Christ before I do our government or our politicians or other men and women. Because we're all sinful by nature. I'd like to read to you from John 5, 24. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. That's faith. And will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life. That's faith and that's the reward, all in one verse. I tell you, you start reading these verses in the Bible and they just take hold of you. But faith, it just doesn't end there to say I believe. There's this thing called repentance. And I've thought a lot about repentance, and but well, first I'm going to read from 2 Chronicles 7:14. And please listen to these words carefully because I think this could touch all of us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If we will humble ourselves and pray and seek. We should be seekers. I should be a seeker. True repentance always comes with some depth of love for the Lord. How can you repent to the Lord if you don't love the Lord? and aren't seeking His love. But it's at the Lord where our sins are freely admitted. And that's the part, freely admitted. We just turn them over to Him. We turn them over to Him looking for forgiveness from Him, looking for acceptance. That's one of the things I think at least as Americans, we all look for 
acceptance. And, and it's like that old country song, looking for love in all the wrong places or something like that. Isn't it? But isn't that truly what we, what we yearn for, to be loved and accepted? Christ accepts us just as we are. There's no dues to pay as far as monthly to be in this club. We just have to believe and we just have to turn everything over to Him. You know, it's, it's so misunderstood, repentance. Oftentimes we're so ashamed, and when I say we, I'm usually talking about me, okay? Oftentimes I'm so ashamed of the path that I've led in my life. We feel that we can't right the wrongs that we've done. And that's true, we can't. We can't right the wrongs we've done. And we don't have to. We just need to hand it over to Christ. Jesus can right the wrongs that we've done if we truly, with a loving heart, ask for repentance. If we ask for him to forgive us and we ask for him to wash away the sin in our lives. But we have to do this sincerely. You know, it can't be lip service. We've got to mean it. But I can tell you that only Jesus can get you to that point in life. And life here and life in heaven. I'd like to read to you from Romans 10, verse 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Pretty straightforward. I'll read it again. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, I think that many of us, when we think of, and of course, me, I guess, not we, me, um, when we think of God, we think of Him up there in heaven, just waiting for us to screw up. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. That, that God's up there at the big hammer, just waiting on you to break the rules so He can drop that hammer of judgment right on your head. Harshly. For not being perfect. Has any of you ever felt that way? Am I the only one that feels that way? I, I don't feel that way now, but I have at times. But I gotta tell you, I've come to believe that that's the farthest thing from God's intentions. My Bible tells me that God loves me. That He loves you. It's pretty simple. God created us because he wants us to glorify him. Is that not what the Bible says? The Bible tells me that we're to glorify God. And if you agree that we're to glorify God, I ask myself a couple of questions. So ask yourself this. How much glory does God get when we're separate from him? How much glory does God get when we're lost, when we're going down that sinful path? How much glory is God going to give when Jesus comes and we're separated with the goats? Now, just common sense tells me that God wants us near Him. That God doesn't want us with the goats. That God wants to forgive us. That we don't have to be perfect. That's why He sent Jesus. So if God has to say, on Judgment Day, I'm sorry, I created you, but I never knew you. If he has to say that, will he be glorified? I don't think so. And again, God loves us so much. He doesn't want to bind us with all these rules. He knows that we're incapable of keeping them. He wants us to try. But what he wants more than anything is for us to love him back, just like he loves us. That's what Christmas is about. That's the gift. The gift that Jesus brings to us. 
And that's why he gave us again that free will, is so that we could choose willingly to love him and strive to be near him. And the Bible says, you know, God sent us a light. Because of our sinful ways, God did send us a light that we might find our way home to be with God the Father. That's why we need to celebrate the nativity, why we need to celebrate the life of Jesus Christ. That's why we need to celebrate Him defeating death, is because He is our way home. He is our life. Only through Jesus can sin be taken away. Jesus is, as the scripture says, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the Lamb of God, His only begotten Son. Is that what we're going to talk about on <clears throat> December 25th when we're in our homes? That Jesus is our Lord and Savior? And He, Jesus alone, is the, the sole reason we celebrate Christmas? Are we going to talk about those things in our homes? In only 10 days, we're going to celebrate his birthday. And in those 10 days, we all need to think about why are we celebrating his coming, his birthday. He came by way of a virgin to show us the way home to our Father. He came to love and he came to die. He came to rescue you. And me. Jesus came to defeat our sin that's been passed on since Adam. That we might have eternal life in heaven with God the Father. But the thing we got to remember, yeah, we're, we're going to be born with sin, but God's word is strong too. Why can't we pass that on from generation to generation? Why can't we? That's part of God's plan. We just have to believe in it. My Bible tells me that Jesus is coming back again. Now, many people say it's been far too long, over 2,000 years, and that he's a legend or a myth or a philosopher, and if he was coming back, he would have done it by now. I think they're way off the mark. When I, when I read all these scriptures that I've read to you this morning, it comes back to love. And I think that, that Jesus is coming back. My Bible tells me he is. And I don't know when, and, and none of you know when, but the one thing we all know is God keeps his promises. Always. And God's timing isn't in tune with my timing and probably not with yours. God's timing is perfect. And if you just watch and listen with those eyes and ears that he gives you and open that heart, you'll see that he's still working here more than ever. His work's not complete. That's why he's not coming back. And I believe that God's waiting not only because his work's not complete, but because... He loves us so much that he's given us every opportunity to willingly accept Jesus, his son, as our Lord and Savior. Now, i got to ask you, and I know the answer for myself, I can't answer for you guys, but is your life so great? Are things going so well that you're willing to go to all? that you don't need Jesus. Give your burdens to Jesus. Trust in Him. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, what are you waiting for? Think, just think about that in your quiet time or right now. What are you waiting for? If you 
you've lost your way, and you were once with Jesus and near to Him, just ask Him, and He'll show you the way back. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to believe. Please don't miss this opportunity. Take this opportunity today in His house. Ask Jesus into your heart. Ask Him to heal your wounds. Whatever they may be. So maybe someone's hurt you or in some way. Or you physically hurt you. Jesus is the great healer. Let Him into your heart. He wants to rescue us all. He loves you. Jesus loves you. That's what Christmas is about. <coughs> Accept his gift. His gift of redeeming grace. Please, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that we can share in your word, Father. I just pray that the words that are shared here amongst us will be pleasing you, Father, and that they would touch someone's heart just now. That they would accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, just be with us as we close, as we, as we sing these hymns. But open our eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. And open our heart that we may receive. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.